When it comes to crazy life stories, China Mac has got to be brought up. Growing up in Chinatown in New York, Mac definitely has a one-of-a-kind story filled with ups and downs. And there was no way I couldn't make a video on him because his story has got to be one of the most intriguing stories ever. From joining his father's rival gang to making a career out of YouTube, China Mac is the true definition of paving your own path and it is quite honestly inspirational as hell. But at the end of the day, nobody can tell his story better than China Mac himself. And this video is really just a summary of the information he has willingly put out on the internet. So I'll be including his links in the bio so you guys can go hear his story from his mouth because there's no way I'm not going to leave something out because there's a lot to cover. Don't forget to get at me on Instagram if you ever want to make video requests because yes, I take those. But without further Further ado, let's get into it. China Mac was raised around criminal organizations his whole life. And back in the 70s and 80s, shit was really going down in these streets. Now, of course, I have no idea what New York is actually like because, truth be told, I've never been. But I don't need to be a genius to know New York back in the 70s and 80s was no Disneyland to say the very least. During Mac's early years, he would be in and out of the group home since the age of 5. For anyone that doesn't know what a group home is, it's basically like foster care. Mac ended up in these group homes at a young age because according to Mac, one day he got upset at his mother because she wouldn't let him get some ice cream, which led to Mac showing up to school the next day telling the teachers that his mom was hitting him. Truth be told, she was actually hitting him, but that's just old school Asian shit, so let's not get our panties up in a bunch. This incident would lead to China Mac beginning his journey in the system, but this is also where he would start rapping. But before we get into all of that, there's a lot of ground to cover when it comes to our man China Mac. Starting from a young age, Mac was around gangsters and crime his entire life. Mac's father was second in command in a gang called the Flying Dragons, but Mac would explain that his father was definitely not involved in his life whatsoever. Mac would later state that his father was only around because he was using his mother to smuggle drugs and accidentally got her pregnant. But because of his father's status, Mac and his mother would also be looked at as somewhat of royalty in their community. China Mac's father worked under a man named Machine Gun Johnny. And Mac would later say that Johnny was more involved in his life than his father was. According to Mac, Johnny was the one that was really looking out for him and his mother at the time. But all of this would completely change when things fell through and China Mac's father ended up turning on his crew, which led to the arrest of Machine Gun Johnny and others around him. After Machine Gun Johnny and his crew went down, Johnny still ordered the people on the street to not touch China Mac or his mother because according to Johnny, they had nothing to do with it, which really just showcases the morals and character of our man Machine Gun Johnny. This incident led to China Mac growing hatred for his father, which led to Mac deciding that he wanted to join the Ghost Shadows, which were the rivals of the Flying Dragons. He was recruited when he was in junior high school by members that would look for kids to come hang out with them, smoke cigarettes, and all the other juvenile delinquent shit. The Ghost Shadows have some deep-rooted history in New York's Chinatown, but we're not really going to get into them too much in this video, but if you guys want an in-depth video about the ghost shadows, check out Forgotten Streets because he made a great video on them. Mac was on a mission to make a name for himself, completely disassociate himself from his father's name, and build his own reputation from the ground up. China Mac would be in and out of jail and prison for most of his days being a youth, but one of the most prolific cases has got to be his situation with MC Jin. MC Jin was another artist that was involved in the Chinatown scene, but I think he was born in Florida. And he is most notable for being one of the first solo Asian American artists signed to a major record label here in the United States, and has transitioned from street style music to gospel music. One night in November, China Mac and Jin were both at a club called Yellow, which is located off 32 Mulberry Street. Jin at the time was Poppin. He had just appeared in Too Fast, Too Furious a year before and just signed to Rough Rider Records. China Mac, on the other hand, was just getting out of prison and was dealing with his girlfriend at the time going back to jail. So needless to say, China Mac wasn't in the best state of mind that night. And Mac and Jin had no relationship or past beef 
prior to this incident at this club, but you already know how the media likes to twist shit around and put extras on everything to make the drama seem like it's much more than it seems. One of Max's associates would say that Jin was messing with one of their girls, and at this point in the night, China Mac was really just looking for a reason to take off on somebody, and Jin just happened to be there in front of Mac at that time. Some words would be exchanged, which led to Jin and Mac getting into an argument in the restroom, where it would quickly turn physical. Mac grabbed Jin, attempting to force him into the stall, but this was when one of Jin's friends ran behind Mac and started getting into it with one of Mac's friends. During this tussle, someone yelled out, Yo, Jin's friend has a knife. And this was when China Mac would immediately turn around, pull his gun out, and point it right at his head. Mac would pull the trigger, and you could call it destiny or whatever you want, but the gun would jam. By this point, Jin had already made his way out of the restroom as Mac struggled with the gun. By the time Mac was aiming down his sights again, the gun would go off prematurely due to it having a hairpin trigger, causing Mac to shoot Jin's associate in the back. After this incident, Mac would later be on the run for an entire year before being arrested in Seattle, where he was trying to leave the country with a fake passport. This incident got China Mac sent to prison for 10 years. During this time, China Mac made the best of his time by focusing on academics provided by the facility. Facility. Sometime after being released out of prison, China Mac would later appear on Vlad TV, and this interview in my opinion blew up and after this first interview, China Mac would appear on a couple other channels such as No Jumper and was received extremely well because you can tell this dude wasn't about the bullshit and he was really about that life and at the same time, it really felt like China Mac reflected a lot while he was in prison because in the interviews, he speaks nothing but wisdom and facts. It would be some time before China Mac and MC Jin would be face to face out on the streets but thank God for YouTube because I'm sure most of you guys watching this video already saw the conversation they had on Mac's YouTube channel. And to be honest, it was a very good conversation. Both China Mac and Jin kept it very gentleman-like. I mentioned earlier that China Mac started rapping at a very young age and this is clearly one of his passions because he has a huge catalog of tracks available on all streaming platforms. But about a half a year ago, China Mac announced that he would be quitting music. And according to Mac himself, the reason why he wanted to give rapping a rest was because it wasn't sustainable for him because truth be told, producing a song is expensive, there's studio time involved, you gotta pay for cameramen for music videos, and all types of other shit that goes into the budget, and it's definitely not free. But we all have to wait and see if China Mac decides to go back into the booth, but for now, Mac has been doing numbers on his YouTube channel where he has a series called Mac Eats and it is quite successful. On top of that, his more recent episodes on this series has been lit, so if you guys haven't checked out Mac Eats yet, I highly suggest you guys go do so. The Crabbing with Cambodian Bloods episode was dope. I don't even like seafood, but that shit looked fun as hell and delicious. And to be quite honest, I don't blame Mac for wanting to take a break from the rap shit because at the end of the day, in my opinion, I feel like the YouTube check pays a lot more and there's probably a lot less that goes into making YouTube videos. Now, that's not the case for everybody because there are a lot of channels out there with like super high production and budget, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's as nearly as much as when it comes to studio time music videos and all that other shit. I said it once and I'm gonna say it again, China Mac is the true definition of paving your own path because let's be honest, after spending so many years in prison, a lot of people aren't able to keep up with the times when they're released. They don't quite understand the internet or they don't quite understand how much life has changed and they either re-offend and go back to prison or they work a nine to five because they don't know what else to do because it's it's almost impossible for felons to get jobs but obviously the universe had different plans for our boy china mac he's doing amazing on his youtube channel and to be quite honest it's inspirational as hell and like most of the other artists that i've covered in this series we are blessed that china mac's story is a story that is still being told because given his situation and his lifestyle it's a miracle that he's alive. I'm really enjoying making these videos for you guys. Doing the research is really fun. I'm already watching thousands of YouTube videos already. So now I'm watching YouTube videos for work and it's kind of awesome. Leave something in the comments section because obviously I left a lot of stuff out. But until next time, I'll be seeing you guys later. Peace.